All right, folks, it's turn 29. This is the first turn where the game could potentially end. And as we can see, U-Bones is indeed launching a very significant attack on my territories. Much to be expected. So I did manage to intercept Titanic Effort here, which is another Zenrin raiding fleet. And after a very long fight, we destroyed it, having lost most of our own troops, but that's fine. Um, this fleet, incidentally, in terms of like the effort that it took to build this, much, much more significant than mine, since every uh, Zenrin Warrior V3 represents over 800 complexity, and at this point, a uh, couple hundred gold, because he's 800 complexity there, the Zincho Mystic Breath is 80, so we're up to 880, plus the Monk, total of 890 complexity for every warrior. Um, we just killed six of them, so that's several thousand complexity. My defensive force is much, much cheaper. So, good fight there. Um, we captured Olnagar from Russian. This fleet can't really do anything useful here anymore, because it's just sitting here on Olnagar, having conquered the place. Um, if the game had ended, um, if the game ends this turn, then it will be useful, pro potentially. He did hit Mira as well. Mira was one of the worlds that I wasn't able to defend. That was predictable, so that's fine. I killed one of his Zenran fighters, V2. Not a big loss for his little fleet there. He was also carrying one population, funnily enough. I defended by a Todos, so I, I did predict that he was going to attack here. Um, he hit with a very significant amount of firepower, but fortunately, my fleet uh, is made up primarily of, of heavy units. And at this point, what happened was basically the heavy units fought with each other. Um, he didn't have the hit generation to bust past their defenses when his hits were spread across this many capital units. So my CR orgs, for example, each require an average of 34 hits to kill. Well, when there's seven of them plus five Xeron heavy cruisers, all of whom also recruit an av require an average of 30 hits to kill, um, spreading hits across 12 targets like this means that in order to saturate their defenses and have good odds of killing the majority of them, you have to you would have to deploy like something on the order of 700 hits. When you're deploying, you know, with your Giganto planet attackers and all that, when you're deploying like maybe 50 or so, odds are low that you're actually going to accomplish anything. So as we can see here, we wiped him out without taking any capital unit casualties. Very, very good. We captured Ebrington because Koneko's fleet hopped away. Koneko has gone, this is referred to as going pirate, more or less. This is all he's got, basically. And so he's just jumping around trying to avoid death, which is fair. He's, he's being a nuisance. He's keeping my, uh, my world count relatively lower. And so he's, you know, he, he's accomplishing the vengeance that he can. In any case, this last turn, we're just purely on the defensive. I mean, that's all it is. We're, we're assembling, we're moving defensive forces around, trying to limit the damage. I'm hoping to stay at 26 or more worlds. And I'm also looking for some place that I can hit in two turns that might be useful. Uh, all the worlds that I see within two turns of me are quite heavily defended. Everyone else is also going into defensive, you know, hold what you got mode. And so I don't think there's really anywhere useful that I can attack. I could potentially attack Action, but that's highly, highly predictable. And probably not going to accomplish much, to be fully honest. I mean, if I was Russian and I saw this happen, I would deploy some of these forces, block Axion, deploy more forces onto the rest of my worlds there. Um, pretty, pretty easy to stop these guys. So I think I may have to launch them on a... I think they're just going to vanish into the ether. They're not going to accomplish anything. Um, but given that, I might as well deploy them to Axion because there's nothing else for them to do, uh, frankly. So yeah, we'll just... Uh... Or potentially down to fuck the way out. No, those, those are all, those are all, well, he might have those cargo boosters to move them, but really, where can they move? They can't get anywhere in one turn, so there's no point in moving them. Um, yeah, yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna hop to Axion. There's no point doing anything else. We will die, but at least we'll die with glory. So, U-Bones has got his fleet right here. He can hit pretty much any world in any of my clusters. Um, most of my planets are fairly well defended at this point. Some are still only lightly held. <clears throat> Piranus is only lightly held, but that's fine for the moment. Um, Bethira is pretty well defended. And I'm actually going to disband this fleet real quick, just so I can churn out another five Hugh 9s there. 
um, and I will move this TK bike down to the Thera. Ariane has about 100 firepower. Gawe is completely undefended. Uh, and Chandra is very, very lightly defended at this point. So I don't necessarily have enough firepower to guard all these places, which means he can pick off another world. Now, and I don't have... These troops are not mobile, so I can't... Uh, I can't actually stop him with these units. They are purely defending Ariane right now. Uh, so, you know, these guys will pick off at least one more word pop world, possibly two if they split up, or potentially, although I hate to think it, even three. Um, really hope he doesn't pick off three, but we're just deploying as many defensive units as possible to cause as much uh, attrition as possible in order to just wear down his forces. From Soy Boy, we're deploying some units, we're keeping other units here. We've got five Giganto Planet Attackers and 14 Boron Recon Buggies coming out, which is well over 100 firepower. I shouldn't have to worry, I shouldn't have to worry about Soy Boy. But equally, these guys can't really go anywhere that's super useful. Everywhere near me is already pretty well defended. Um, I guess I'll deploy one more of them to Serendipity. And then the last one I'll just leave sitting here. Over here, Kittylandia, we're hitting Abatiwa, Dukanon, Thermonidae, uh, Ants Thurgton this turn. I believe we're also hitting Yingtran with something. I'm hitting pretty much every world, every world in the area that isn't mine is under attack right now. Um, just because, you know, I, I want to take them. I will deploy that to Thermonidae as well. And then we've got Nozama fighters coming out. This fleet will hop somewhere and take a planet. I can't really stop that. Uh, effectively. You're deploying to Thermonity, which you don't necessarily need to be doing. It kind of depends on whether uh, U-Bones jumps down to Thermonity as well, or whether he goes somewhere else. Um, hmm, yeah. Like I said, the game's going to be over in, in at most two more turns, or three more turns. So, there's really only, this is kind of the last chance to do much. I think what I'm going to do here is, I mean, what I'd like would be, I would like to actually run into this fleet with this fleet plus a few random chaff units and destroy it. That would be my ideal. But I don't know that he's going to let me do that. And I need to just kind of reclaim as many worlds as possible just to pump up my world count. In terms of rankings, I'm not going to pass Shaster unless something uh, really incredible happens. Uh, Shaster, it looks like, is not really under attack. He is fighting Havoc. But it looks like that fight isn't really changing much. Uh, wow, those are the luckiest Nozama fighters in the galaxy. That was super unfortunate for Shaster. Um, so yeah. I'm gonna end up fourth. I may even end up fifth if Mongrel manages to pass me. But it looks like Mongrel is under attack and is actually, actually maybe losing worlds. So, a little bit. So I don't think he's going to manage to pass me, which is great. I like that. I am on the board for Firepower again, and for Net Worth, of course. Uh, in terms of Net Worth, I'm below Zen Master and Jolly Bones, who I'm ahead of in Worlds and Population, but well below in terms of Firepower, which is why that is that way. And, uh, but yeah, overall, overall, I'm very, very satisfied with how well I've done this game. Uh, and I think that's going to be it. We're deploying our defensive units, and... Uh, odds are good that the the game will just end in this coming turn, but uh, if it doesn't, then we will have one more turn uh, in order to uh, basically have worlds taken away from us again and to move around uh, fighting on the defensive. But for now, I think that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in turn 30, which may be the end of the game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Destruction Delivered turn 30, but as you can see, the game has finished. Yundead Bones has won. So let's take a look at that last turn. On that last turn, Russian recaptured Olnagar, which I had moved away from. Uh, I killed a couple of his firepower, but nothing much. He defended Axion. It was very predictable that I was going to go there, so I anticipated he would defend it, which he did. Uh, U-Bones captured Kabna with a deep strike of both of his combined Xenron fleets that have been floating around. Uh, we took out about 30 of his firepower, all told, um, and lost all of our all-terrain rovers that were there. We captured Einstein with our little force there. We captured, recaptured Mira, despite him bringing in four Megabot V2s, 
and we only, lo only lost about 30 firepower doing that, and we captured Abatiwa back, um, and then we lost uh, Bigamo and Bayatodos. Bayatodos was hit by a pretty significant fleet, and Bigamo, of course, was hit by that surviving fleet of Konekos, bringing him down to 16 super space fighters. Um, we captured Thermonomy back, so basically this, this turn, this whole turn was just swapping planets back and forth, me capturing as many as I could, defending as many as I could. Um, I didn't, I think, successfully defend any planets because they basically just evaded my defenses. Um, this fleet hit Adim, so yeah, he was going pretty hard on the Zenran strategy right there at the end in a bid to grab as many worlds as possible. Perfectly valid, reasonable, you can see why he does it. We hit Ducanon there, and then Thurgton was defended. He had brought in, he guessed that I was going there, he brought in all the troops he possibly could, so he gathered a pretty massive fleet there and just bounced me. Since I had no chaff, um, I started losing capital vessels right away, uh, and so he ended up bouncing me for a total cost of just about 130 firepower compared to my 300. So very, very well played to everyone involved, and we can look at the final player rankings. I ended with 26 worlds, the same number of worlds that I'd had for actually a couple of turns. I ended fourth in worlds because Jolly Bones tied me but had less uh, total, less population, which I think is the next metric. Uh, I was third in population, uh, tenth in firepower. So in terms of firepower, Jolly Bones had a ton of firepower. U Bones, Travail, Shaster, Russian, all those guys had a ton of firepower. I was relatively inefficient at converting my complexity to firepower. I ran out of Ultranium for a couple of turns on my capital worlds, which is a problem I commonly have. And I was embroiled in this defensive conflict with U-Bones right at the end, which did kill a bunch of my firepower. I mean, in that last turn, I lost almost 400. So if I hadn't had any losses that last turn, I would have been up here by Aurelis or a little bit higher. Um, and I was right smack in the middle in terms of net worth, number six in net worth. Uh, overall, very, very good game. Actually, one of, my one of my best mega games. Though admittedly, the competition is fairly sparse. We can look at my profile here. This is my old account name from back when... Uh, in terms of mega games, I dropped out of several mega games earlier on, but before this last, uh, several years ago, was my best performance where I was 39th out of, I think, 300 and something? Uh, 258. 39th out of 258. Uh, and that was back when, just, just for reference, that was back when megas were this big. Ah, those were the days. Uh, this is, you know, almost 10 times the size of the game that we just completed. You can see down here... Uh, all the, the number of players of the different factions. Uh, you can see the most popular at that time were Matog. There were 56 Matog in that game. Uh, I played, if I recall correctly, I think I played Entradishar in last as well, didn't I? No, I played Nozama in last. As you can see, I played a variety of different factions. Um, Entradishar are probably my favorite. Cosmic Needlemen are also pretty cool. But in any case, that is a mega game of Ultra Core. That's how the game is played. Um, it was a lot of fun. This is about how long games tend to be. A long game is 35 turns, and that's very long. That allows for very, very impressive battles near the end. Um, a short game is like 20 to 25 turns. Uh, but that it was it was good. It was a lot of fun. We can see right at the end there, um, pretty much everything was kind of emplaced. I wasn't really moving anywhere else at that point. I knew the game, the end of the game was coming up. Um, by the end, you can see we'd pretty much driven the enemy uh, over into this section. We'd secured our heartland. Uh, we had lost Kabnaw to U-Bones uh, over on that side. Uh, but, you know, that's fine. Um, and we had fairly light defenses remaining in our home cluster. Uh, Arion did have quite a bit of firepower but with all those Sentinels and the uh, A7 Maulers that I'd been building there. I had enough transport capacity to move some but not many. Uh, but yeah, overall it was uh, it was good. It was a lot of fun. I think I, I, I'm satisfied with how well I did. I could obviously have done better, but uh, placing in the, in the top four after so many years away, I think against this competition, I think I'm, I'm very satisfied with. I was actually surprised that uh, Star Charger did so poorly because Star Charger used to be one of the absolute top players. I mean, Travail, Star Charger, um, UC Rommel, although he's gone now. Centrion, he's gone now. Uh, Andy, 6747, I think, were the numbers. He's still around. I don't know how much he plays these days. Um, I've played with, um, used to be, used to call himself Pastafarian. Uh, yeah, his profile name is still Pastafarian. I played with him a number of times. Um, he was pretty good. 
So it's nice to see some of those old familiar faces, and it's nice to see some new names, like Russian. Russian is a new name. U-Bones, I don't remember, although it says he was around when I was around, but he didn't play in any of the Alpha games. He came just after the Alpha closed. So I'd been here for about two years, and my activity was starting to drop off by the time Undead Bones joined, apparently. And you can see he has placed very, very well, and he's gotten a lot better over time, too. Um... Interesting, interesting. So yeah, I didn't recognize him. I didn't recognize Russian is a totally new player, and Russian did very well. To be honest, I think this was his first mega game. Yeah, he first logged on exactly a month ago. And uh, placing so highly in a mega game is pretty impressive. Ranked 9 in his uh, in his first game. That's, that's very nice. Uh, Koneko I didn't recognize. Uh, who else? Who else here did well that I did not know? I knew Caruso, I knew Zen Master, I knew Mongrel. I think I knew Aralus. I knew of Aralus, I never really played with him a whole lot. But uh, yeah, in, in any case, it was a great game. Thanks to everyone who played in it. Uh, thanks to everyone for watching these videos. I really enjoyed making them, I hope you enjoyed watching them. Um, I, hope, I hope the game is interesting to you, because I think it's a tragedy that this game has lost so much of its player population, because I find Ultra Core incredibly fun, especially for the investment. I mean, playing Ultra Core requires at most about half an hour a day for a month or so, and then you can just take the time off, walk away from it, come back whenever you feel like it, it'll be there. Uh, it's a great game, I think. And you can play it on your phone. It takes a little bit of patience, but you can play it on your phone, you can play it on your computer, your tablet, anything that can connect to the internet. Uh, it really is, and it's shockingly deep for a browser-based strategy game. There aren't a whole lot of members of this category around anymore. I know they've always been a niche uh, a, a niche type, but I think they deserve the attention. I think they deserve the applause. I think they're I think they're a lot of fun. And so uh glad that I could share this all with y'all. I may do another one. I, I might do another series on Ultra Core. I'm not certain. Obviously it doesn't receive a whole lot of oops, that took a while to load. Obviously it doesn't receive a whole lot of viewership on the channel, but you know what? A lot of the things that I do don't, and I just do them because they're fun. So in any case, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this series, consider subscribing to the channel or supporting me on Patreon. If you didn't like this series, well, hopefully you'll like the next one. And in any case, I'll see you all in the next video.